Uh, kids, don't adjust your television screens. <laughs> This is a red beard. I am not Rob Brink. He is on hiatus filming a documentary of Dylan Reader with his shirt off. Take one. <laughs> That's actually true. We can do this. All right, good. Let's, we'll keep it PG this time. Next time we'll get a little creepy. I think that's a good idea. Does that one pick up on the see-throughness of the t-shirt? Because I'm, I'm getting the vibe. No, right definitely here. not. No. It really? doesn't. Plus, I'm wearing a bulletproof vest underneath this. You can't. Um, it looks like a bra, though. Something's bulletproof <laughs> over there. Yeah. What's up, Shane? How you living? So good. Yeah? Yep. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Eric, for coming back also. This is awesome to have you guys here. Awesome. It's like to be here. So can we just jump right into the face problem here? Or not problem, but it looks like you got hurt. What, <laughs> what happened? Problem here. Yeah, because I didn't hear about this and I think Lee knows, but yeah, what two, happened? Two weeks ago, we were at a skate park and they had like a portable basketball hoop in the corner. And it was at about, I don't know, seven, eight feet. And I had to do it, two hand shack dunk. <laughs> the problem with this portable basketball hoop is that it had a crack in the base so there was no water or sand in it to keep it from- oh, it's Tipping over again. Right, so when Shaq Fu came holding on to the rim- <laughs> Shane Fu. <laughs> Shane Fu went down hard. Like yeah. the whole thing just went back and I had no way of getting out. Rim came across the side of my face and hand pinned from the massive glass backboard. Oh. I don't even know what's going on at this point. I thought my entire skull was caved in. Oh my gosh. Eric got me to the hospital with the quickness and I didn't know what was going on. My brain, I felt, was just swelling. Yeah. You know? Um, so about 15 stitches in the nose here, super glued my eyelid back together, oh. about 10 or so on the cheek. You had and, stitches on um, your cheek too? I have a facial fracture right now that's still healing and the concussion was pretty extreme. Is, is this worse than any fall skateboarding you've ever taken? I mean, for the face, yeah, that yeah. Would sucked. I mean, because I hit the back of my head first and then the rim to the front. Yeah, So you got a concussion? Pretty bad one, yeah. And uh, I'm just lucky that, I mean, like when I look up, I still see double vision. They say that's gonna go away in a little while. Hopefully it does. Oh my you know, god! The bone that broke here is gonna heal on its own, so there's no, I'm lucky that they're not gonna have to have like any kind of surgery to that. Yeah. The whole time in the emergency room, I'm telling Eric, I'm like, this is not going away. My head is killing me. It's like imagine you having a brain freeze, never going away. Oh. You know. That's the so. worst. How, how long sober are you right now? Seven years. And just because of that, when you went into the hospital, were you on any pain meds, or did you tell them no and you didn't want to do it, but you had to? I'm sure. Yeah, had to. I was like, you know, like, hey. This is what this medicine is made for. Yeah. You know, like I try my hardest not to take that kind of stuff. And when they send you home with those pills, I got to give it to somebody. Yeah, like, hey, sure. give me that when it tells me to give me that. And once I can kind of like, I don't need that shit no more. Like I'll go to the ibuprofen or the Advil's yeah. or whatever and just get rid of it. But that's how you relapse real quick, real easy. Well, the same kind of story, careful. what happened to your face? Did you go through what? the same kind of? I was born this what? way. Um, so, so, <laughs> so uh, how did it all come together? How the whole shake joke thing it was like? Because you guys were kind of like talking that that the lingo that you guys use, which is like the logos and stuff, yeah. for, for years. Mm -hmm. and then you just started screening shirts, or like, how did it originally? Like, what, what was the concept behind it? Well, about like eight years ago, I've always wanted to make a video with like close homies of mine mm -hmm. that actually didn't even have board sponsors at the time, and I was like not skating really at that point I was drinking a lot and I just picked up a video camera and I thought it'd be cool to like put this project together once we did that and reached out to like Andrew and Eric and everybody at Baker like hey you guys want to drop a little section in the middle of this video and then from there I was like hell yeah this is happening let's start you know ironing on t-shirt graphics printing out the stickers cutting them up setting up little you know premieres where we could like Cowtown in Arizona I mean that's why I think it's so it's so cool that it still has that feeling, you yeah. know? I'm still using like the buy the homies for the homies because if you got an idea for Shake Jam, most likely it's gonna get done. Since you've been here, the Death Wish video has come out. Yeah. And that was awesome. Um, is there anything that maybe you wanted to put in there that maybe you weren't able to? Or like, is there something else that we can look forward to see be seeing soon? Oh, we don't have a project in the works. Like I was hurt since November 16th, so I didn't have the last six months to film, yeah. you know? Um, which could be a blessing because it gave me a lot of time to help get the video together. I didn't do a whole lot of editing, but I definitely sat there and, mm -hmm. you know, chimed in on stuff. But for me personally, I would have liked to have done more. 
and some of the guys I know were in a similar situation. Lizard broke his arm on uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah. So he didn't have the last four months as well. Uh, I mean, you Those know. Those are like essential. Yeah, yeah. It's all like, you know, like things like I would have loved to have seen an Antoine part. But, you know, there's always something that, that happens and goes along with any sort of, you can't have everything work out perfectly, you know, yeah. like it just doesn't, nothing's going to happen. Well, then it would never get done. Yeah, so and, and we, did, we did put it off for five years or four years yeah. or something like that. I don't. I forget. We were advertising that it was coming out next year for three years, four years. Mm -hmm. What was the oh. thing called? Goat foot. Goat foot. Mm -hmm. Gonna give it to you. What is that? All night to the early sun. <laughs> don't get caught with that. <laughs> I think because I drank so much back then and like didn't you know pass out wherever, and then when I'd wake up and try to take my socks off, I'm like, why is it like it's stuck? It's really stuck and I can't get it. I used to like go like this with my bottom of my foot and my sock just go like that and it wouldn't come off. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be it like, like rip stuck skin there. off. Like, like really stuck. Like stuck, super glued. Your yeah. sock was stuck to the bottom of your And feet. I, I, I thought it was because the poisons of foot. the booze and, and whatnot off, was coming out to the like bottom of the soles of my feet. Skin off Nasty. That, that could be. You know, it could, hey. But then, All but, I know is when I sobered up, no more go for it. But then you do a thing, you have your Instagram name is Gold Mouth. Gold Mouth Gumbo, I'm going to give it to you. But what's right. that? I got to run with the gold. I'm going to give it to you too. No, but I'm like, is, is that like a... Is that same? associated with that? Yeah, can you get Goat Mouth? I, <laughs> oh, yeah. can you get the... Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Good. I think if you kept drinking, you might have... Like yeah. your tongue sticks to your teeth or something? <laughs> Just nasty. Mumford might have Goat Mouth, you don't even know it. Ooh. I think anybody when they get drunk enough. <laughs> Wait, so I have, I, I want to go back to goat foot because I'm kind of you, amazed do you right have now. It? No, I don't. Never had it, actually. The goat is all around you. Goat, great, isn't it greatest of all time? Or? Yeah, that's, that's a, the I mean, that's acronym. Jordan, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. But, but you're in a band, band called, called the Goat. goat. You, yeah. You used to, you, you're an ex goat foot and mm -hmm. you're goat mouth. Yeah, even when I started Shake Jump back in the day, I was like, I, I thought I had this whole like thing where I'm like, I'm gonna start distribution is gonna be called Goat Mouth. Everything's gonna be called that, you know? And the production name's gonna be called that, yeah. you know? And then when the band started and it's like, what do you wanna call it? I was like, I wanna call it the Goat, you yeah. know? Like, oh, you so, thought of the name? Yeah, so it's kind of just, I don't know, it's just kind of stuck with me. Yeah. Like a nickname or whatever, you know? Yeah. Can't shake it. No, roll with it. the goat is always with you. Yeah, and no, so they just added that gumbo to it. It could, it up. Yeah, it could very well be goat junt. Let's it could be <laughs> goat stance. Let's come on. Where's where's, yeah. where's the goat at right now? Are you guys working on new music or anything like that? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't know. We're, it's so hard to get that the whole band together to just like let's just jam, let's just create, let's bring it back, man. And it's always like when we have a show to do, that's when we get together and we kick it and we just start vibing with each other we're like damn we missed this you know like why don't we do this more yeah but you just recently opened for cat power right that was fun yeah. scary, you, wait, you scary too yeah it was a tour it was a little oh, tour. tour we caught the yeah. west coast end of it yeah yeah and it was like four of the biggest venues i've ever you know i'll remember that for the rest of my life like i don't expect us doing anything like that again but if we shit if we do cool how many people was like a, the average venue i don't know well, Thousand, thousand plus, I would think, you know? Like, I'm looking over a sea of people going like this, like, what, dude, what is this? I came for cat power! <laughs> guys screaming at me! And would you turn it up more? No, I would just give it to him, man. Like, are you hating on me? Like, oh, I'm picking you out now. Like, are you too? Sometimes we win a couple people over, like afterwards in the show, like, some people come by, like, you know what? Not bad, that was cool, thank you, that was fun. You bring me back to like my high school years or whatever, you know? Like. Good looking out, Sean, Cat Power. That was awesome. And you take something like that and now you're, you, you, you did a song with Lil Wayne? I oh. did, I did. And how does, how does that happen? Because now, now it's one thing you, you may just say is random and it's kind of like a joke or it's kind of like just for fun. It is for fun and homie, doing it, whatever. yeah. But now, now all of a sudden that's getting kind of, in my eyes, getting kind of serious. Like yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually working on my like goat i'm always gonna do goat and occasional others but i'm actually working on a solo project right now goat mouth gumbo working on that right now but the little wayne situation just kind of came out of nowhere to get a phone call from him like i want you on this song i'm like really all right when do i have to have it turned in by and he's like two days i was like damn deadline's that quick and he's like yeah you, you got it i was like send over you know like sent me the beat got to hear it that night, went to the studio, recorded it, sent it back. He seemed to like it. And I didn't know if it was, at the time I thought it was just maybe a mixtape. 
But then when I heard later, it was like an actual studio album, like legit. I'm like, dang, am I gonna make the cut? Like, yeah. So I didn't even know until somebody like it had like gotten leaked, I think. I was like, you're on it, man. That's so, so awesome. Did you write the lyrics like on the spot there? Or did you already have lyrics? You that night, I got the phone call at like midnight. Right when I heard it, it was on. Like I stayed up until I finished, you know? And then pretty much I wrote it, recorded it and everything in like a matter of 24, 48 hours. Cause I, I heard rumors of it when before it came out, like cause people were telling, like all the skaters know, so they were talking about. It. But then when I saw, I finally heard it on the thing. I was tripping. I was yeah, like, it's oh, crazy, huh? Oh, I That's mean, on an album, awesome. you know? Yeah, like, so I was like blown yeah. away. To go to like Amoeba with Beagle and actually see the the CD sitting there and flip it around, I'm like. That says my name, man. Like, yeah. And not I'll, on something like what? It's yeah. like, dude, you, I'm sure I used to listen to Hot Boys and all that stuff. Yeah, that, you know? for sure. So that's fucking pretty. And did you not know, like, how is, who cares how people are going to react to that? That was an opportunity. Good looking out, little Wayne. Like, you know, hopefully we can do more out there. And I'm back, you know, like, he's a real dude. He skates. He loves it. This isn't like an act. is and you know, like. He's down for it, you know? Yeah, I saw he was hanging out at Baker Boys recently. Yeah, loves what we do over there and right back, you know? I know that kids at home would be super mad if we didn't ask about a couple things. One of which is Antoine. The other one is if they're, if and when we are expecting a Baker video. Because I know like Brian kind of touched on it a little bit. The Baker for Life shirt, he was saying something about that. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. That'd be a question for those guys. I yeah. don't know. I mean, Antoine, keep your head up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Antoine. So, what's going? Can you give us an update on Antoine? Yeah, I talk to him about once a week. He gives me a call. He's in uh, he's in the L.A. County uh, jail, and I don't know if the plans are to move him into a prison for like uh, the duration of his sentence. And I believe he's serving eighteen months. Yeah. Is he Somewhere studying for around. a role or something? Is that why he's in? <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's working on a new uh, character actor. Yeah, Spielberg movie. There we go. Yeah, but he uh, he's doing he's doing really good in there. He's I, I believe he's like starting to at least try and apply to take his GED so that he can you know get his thing going. And uh, he's he's uh, going to some AA meetings and stuff in there. He's just you know it's a he, he's working out his own program in there. You know, and I think that he realizes that he let a lot of stuff slip by when he was out. And, uh, and I don't think he wants to let that happen again when he gets out. How difficult is that for, for, for someone like you who's in not con complete control of what's going on? Because you kind of have to let him go, but like you see where he could take it. You see the potential he has. Yeah, and just like, it's hard to watch. I but mean, then you can't like, babysit him. Mean, yeah, like, you can't. You have to let somebody make their own decisions. And he's a man and he's, he's going to do it on his own. And nobody's going to tell him to sober up. And nobody's going to tell him that he's letting something pass him up that's a, an opportunity of a lifetime um you know and just to hear him speak you know the last you know couple months that i've talked to him in there i see a change in his attitude and i see a change in his motivation and i think that um i think he's serious this time he's i've talked to him a number of times about it before the the whole thing had you know happened and he would say what you wanted to hear and, and then he would eventually go back to doing kind of what he was doing before but he he know he knows that he can't really do anything else, you know. Like he, I mean, he's extremely smart and talented, but by his appearance alone, you know, there's going to be a lot of. A he's lot not going to be a day trader. Yeah, he's, he's, he's no. gonna, Wall Street's not, not, a not, not kindergarten knows. teacher. Um, he, you know, he's, he's got. I mean, he's got something that that no other skateboarder has. He's got something very special, and uh, pe people just want to see him skate, and he realizes that. Uh, says, what's up with Baker dropping a couple of their pro riders? What happened there? Done some crazy shit in there, that, you know, like that, and seen some crazy shit like that, that I just don't like it, because that's not me, you know? Ah!